Hi everyone, and welcome back to Storytime with me, Sammy. Now, because it's Saturday, we're going to do a long story again. This story is about an emperor who can't stop buying new clothes. One day, two weavers come to town and say they have a magical silk that can only be seen by a person who truly deserves their position. This story is called The Emperor's New Clothes. Shall we begin? The Emperor's New Clothes, written by Hans Christian Andersen, but edited by me, Sammy. Many years ago, there was an emperor who was so exceedingly fond of new clothes that he spent all his money on being well dressed. He cared nothing about checking in with his soldiers, going to the theater, or going for a ride in his carriage. He only did these things so that he could show off all his new clothes. He had a coat for every hour of the day, and instead of saying, as one might, about any other ruler, the king is in a meeting, they always said, the emperor is in his dressing room. In the great city where he lived, life was always happy and joyous. Every day, many strangers and tourists came to town. And among them one day came two men who were very cunning and liked to deceive people. They let it be known that they were weavers and said that they could weave the most magnificent fabrics imaginable. Not only were their colours and patterns uncommonly fine, but clothes made of this cloth had a wonderful way of becoming invisible to anyone who was unfit for his or her duties, or who was unusually stupid. These would be just the clothes for me, thought the emperor. If I wore them, I would be able to discover which men in my empire are unfit for their posts, and I could tell all the wise men from the fools. Yes, I certainly must get some of this stuff woven for me right away. He paid the two weavers a large sum of money to start at once. They set up two looms and pretended to weave, though truly there was nothing on the looms. All the finest silk and the purest gold thread which they demanded went straight into their suitcases, while they pretended to work in their empty looms far into the night. I'd like to know just how those weavers are getting on with the cloth thought the emperor, but he felt slightly uncomfortable when he remembered that those who were unfit for their position would not be able to see the fabric. It wasn't that he doubted himself, of course, yet he thought he'd rather send someone else to see how things were going. The whole town knew about the cloth's peculiar power, and all were impatient to find out just how stupid their neighbours were. I'll send my honest old minister to the weavers, the emperor decided. He'll be the best one to tell me how the material looks, for he is a sensible man, and nobody does his duty better. So the honest old minister went to the room where the two weavers sat working away at their empty looms. Heaven help me, he thought as his eyes flew wide open. I can't see anything at all. But he did not say so, for the false weavers begged him to be kind and to come near as to approve the excellent pattern and the beautiful colours. They pointed to the empty looms, and the poor old minister stared as hard as he dared, but he couldn't see anything, because there was nothing to see. Heaven have mercy, he thought to himself. Can it be that I am a fool? I'd never have guessed it and not a soul must know. Am I unfit to be the minister? It would never do to let on that I can't see the cloth. Don't hesitate to tell us what you think of it, said one of the false weavers. Oh, it's beautiful, it's enchanting, the old minister exclaimed while peering through his spectacles. Such a pattern, what amazing colors. I'll be sure to tell the Emperor how delighted I am with it. We are pleased to hear that, the false weavers said. They proceeded to name all the colours and explain the intricate pattern. 
the old minister paid the closest attention so that he could tell it all to the emperor. And so he did. The false weavers at once asked for more money, more silk and more gold thread to get on with the weaving. But it all went into their pockets and suitcases. Not a thread went into the looms, though they pretended to work at their looms as busy as ever. The emperor presently sent another trustworthy official to see how the work progressed and how soon it would be ready. The same thing happened to him that had happened to the minister. He looked and looked, but there was nothing to see in the looms. He couldn't see a thing. Isn't it a beautiful piece of goods? The false weavers asked him as they displayed and described their imaginary pattern. I know I'm not stupid, the man thought to himself. So it must be that I am unworthy of my good office. That's strange. I mustn't let anyone find out, though. So he praised the material that he could not see. He declared he was delighted with the beautiful colours and the exquisite pattern. To the emperor, he said, It helped me spellbound. All of the town was talking of this splendid cloth, and the emperor wanted to see it for himself while it was still in the loom. Attended by a band of chosen men, among whom were his two trusted officials, the ones who had been to the weavers, he set out to see the new clothes. He found the men weaving with all of their might, but without seeing a single thread in their looms. Magnificent, the two officials said that were already duped. Just look, your majesty, what colours, what a design! They pointed to the empty looms, each supposing the other could see the stuff. What's this? thought the emperor to himself, not daring to speak his mind. I can't see anything! This is terrible! Am I a fool? Am I unfit to be the emperor? What a thing to happen to me of all people! Oh, it is very pretty, is what he said aloud. It has my highest approval. And he nodded happily at the empty loom. Nothing could make him say that he couldn't really see anything. Everyone who accompanied the emperor stared and stared. One saw no more than the other. But they all joined the emperor in exclaiming, Oh, it is very pretty. They advised him to wear the clothes made of this wonderful cloth, especially for a great procession that he was soon to lead. Magnificent, excellent, unsurpassed, said the band of men. Each one did his best to seem pleased. The emperor gave each of the false weavers a cross to wear in their buttonhole, and the title of Sir Weaver. Before the procession, the false weavers sat up all night, burning more than six candles to show just how busy they were finishing the emperor's new clothes. They pretended to take the cloth off the loom, they made cuts in the air with huge scissors, and at last they said, Now the emperor's new clothes are ready for him. The emperor himself came with his noblest noblemen, and the false weavers raised each an arm as if they were holding something. They said, these are the trousers, here's the coat, and this is the shirt, naming each garment. All of them are as light as a spider web. One would almost think he had nothing on, but that's what makes them just so fine. Exactly, all the noblemen agreed, though they could see nothing, for there was nothing to see. Your Imperial Majesty, if you would please, take your current clothing off, the false weavers said. We will help you on with your new ones here in front of the mirror. So the emperor undressed, and the false weavers pretended to put new clothes on him, one garment after another. They took him round the waist and pretended to be fastening something. The emperor turned round and round before the mirror. How well your majesty's new clothes look, aren't they so becoming? They heard on all sides. That pattern, so perfect, those colours, so suitable, it is a magnificent outfit. The Minister of Public Procession soon announced, Your Majesty's canopy awaits. Well, I'm supposed to be ready, said the Emperor, and turned for one last look in the mirror. It's a remarkable fit, isn't it? He seemed to regard his costume with the greatest interest. 
So off went the Emperor in procession, under a splendid canopy. Everyone in the streets and windows said, Oh, how fine are the Emperor's new clothes? Don't they just fit him to perfection? Nobody would confess that they couldn't see anything, for that would prove him or her unfit for their position, or a fool. No costume the Emperor had worn before was ever such a complete success, until a child said, But he hasn't got anything on. Did you ever hear such innocent prattle, said the child's mother. But one person whispered to the other what the child had said. He hasn't anything on. A child says, he hasn't anything on. But he hasn't anything on. He hasn't anything on. The whole town started to cry out at last. The emperor shivered, for he suspected they were right, and he had been made a fool. But he thought, the procession has got to go on. So he walked more proudly than ever with his head held high. The end. That story has always intrigued me because it shows how lies can lead to a huge mess. So the trusted advisors lied to the emperor, the emperor lied to everybody, and everybody lost because he ended up walking through town naked, so he was caught out as a liar, and so were his ministers. But it's kind of like when you lie to your parents. If you say that you've tidied your room, and your parents come into your room and find that you haven't tidied your room, well then, you get in trouble for having a messy room, and you get in trouble for lying. So it's always much better to stay honest. Now, if you would prefer to listen to my stories in podcast form, please click one of the links below, and if you enjoyed that story, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more story times with Sammy! Bye guys!